Hey there, I'm Avorius and I'm making a game. Making games is hard. Luckily, I am pretty experienced, so I actually made a whole video to talk about this in detail, and I prepared everything, recorded the scripts, and then in the end I listened to it, and it sucked. <laughs> it was pretty boring. Turns out making videos is also very hard. So I'm just throwing all of that away, and you get the zero effort version now. <laughs> So let's just talk about the game. It is going to be a top-down hack-and-slash brawler, and just in case that doesn't mean anything to you, classic entries in the genre might be Diablo or Torchlight. And I've always kind of had a soft spot for these games, so for example Digimon World 4, I used to play that game all the time, even though it's not very good. And yeah, the core idea that really drove me to start this project in the first place is that it will take place on small planets. And this has some very unique implications on the game and level design. So for example, the day and night cycle will be very important. And there's plenty of inspiration to draw from. So if you look at games like League of Legends or Super Smash Brothers or Dark Souls, they are not technically top-down hack and slash brawlers in the classical sense, but they are close enough that you can take a mechanic or two and they're just very fun and interesting in their own unique ways. I think if you take the correct mechanics from a game or two of these, you can make a very interesting combination. So this is another thing I actually spent a long time on, and in the original video I actually did narrate this prophecy. Turns out I'm also not a voice actor, so I'm going to spare you from the experience in this video. And yeah, I've actually written out most of the story for the game. I hope that will help inspire some choices in the game design. But I won't talk about it in detail here because I don't want to spoil you and it doesn't really matter for the videos anyway. So let's instead talk about the scope of the game. Most games most people play are AAA games and they have quite a lot of benefits. Mostly they have a huge budget. This is actually not a number I've taken out of thin air, so 50 million for budget is something that is actually quite realistic for modern day AAA games. And with this money they pay hundreds of professionals to work on it in full time for probably uh, a few years. And I will probably have the same amount of time scale, but I don't have a budget. Um, maybe I do have a little bit of a budget, like a few hundred dollars or something like that. Won't be too bad, but yeah, I don't have a budget for the game specifically. It's not hundreds of professionals, it's just one maniac. And uh, I don't work on it on full time because I actually have a job. So I only have my sleepless nights to work on this. So I hope that will turn out fine for me. But I think the obvious thing to do here is to graph this out. So over here in Desmos, we've got a graph and the x-axis represents the elapsed time and the y-axis the amount of hours that were put into the game. And for the typical AAA game, we've got people working for 8 hours a day and then there's 100 people more or less working on it. So that makes this line not very realistic, but I think it's realistic enough for this example. And then for my game, if I'm lucky, I can work for maybe one or two hours a day. And obviously, I'm one person. So that makes this horizontal line down there. And if I zoom in, it doesn't get any better. It still stays horizontal. And after two years, it's still just at a couple hundred hours, which is n nothing compared to the AAA title. I don't think this is very good. But you know, in software development, we have a saying that goes something like, what one person can do in a day, two people can do in two days. And I think that sounds very scientific. So I gather instead of multiplying by 100, I should divide by 100 instead. Do that for both equations here. And suddenly my purple line is above the yellow line of the AAA title. And from that I gather that for my efforts, I get far more game than the big studios could ever produce. And I think that is very encouraging. So I'll just take that as my truth and let's move on to the next topic. So let's talk about game engines. Really when I started off I knew about Unity and Unreal and I started off using Unity but grew annoyed with some of its features. And then I saw that Unreal Engine 5 is coming out so I started using that but ran into some walls because the engine is kind of rigid. And then I looked into some videos and tutorials and found Godot and used that for two months. 
And after six months now, <laughs> I'm finally ready to make my decision. Obviously, I could have made my own game engine as well, but I've made some experience with that in the past, and I don't think that's a good idea for anyone. Like, that's a lot of work. You should really only do that if you're doing a very, very off-standard project. And honestly, reading out tables is kind of boring, as I realized after trying to record this a bunch of times. So uh, you're just going to see the animation roll off here. To, to sum this up, Unity and Unreal are big engines and they offer a lot of features, but are also a little bit rigid in the process. Godot is rather the new player and has a very fun editor and is very nice to use, but is lacking a little bit in the feature department as of yet. And each engine also focuses on its own development process. So Unity, everything is done in C Sharp. Unreal, you do stuff with nodes. And in Godot, most of it is done with Pythonic scripting. And really from these points, you should prioritize yourself what is important to you. For me, I need an engine that just doesn't get into my way too much and is fun to use. And that is also what I found after having used each engine after two months. So in Godot, I got the furthest with my project and it was also the most fun. So that's what I'm going to use. And yeah, of course, this table is highly subjective. But I think something like this still would have been really useful for me to see like six months ago. Maybe I wouldn't have needed to spend all this time trying out the different engines. And even though it was a learning experience, usually you just want to work on your game. And with that, we get to the fun, floaty text part of the presentation. This is really about the to-dos that I have planned out for the recent future. The biggest one is definitely fighting. So if the fighting sucks, the whole game will suck. It's the core mechanic of the game. And any sane person would really start implementing the fighting first. But you know I'm not a part of that group. I've actually got the next two episodes fully planned out. Neither of them involve any of the core mechanics, but they are definitely very fun to work on as well. So tune in next time to see what I actually ended up working on. This has been Avorius, signing off.